What's up guys, it's Cash here, back with another video. Today, I'm going to teach you how to animate in Roblox Studio. So, let's get started. First things first, to animate, you're going to need a rig to animate with. So go up here to the Avatar tab, then click on Rig Builder. Then, once you press on Rig Builder, you should see this pop up, and it says Generate Rig. So, there's two types of rigs, there's R15 and R6, and then there's the body shape, which is block avatars, R throw, and stuff like that. Now, we're gonna click on R15, and then we're gonna click on block avatar. Now, if you're animating with R15, you should make sure that your player is actually R15. So save this game to Roblox, I'm going to call it animations. And then once you save that, go into game settings, then go to avatar, and make sure the avatar type is R15 or R6. And if it's not the same as the rig that you're animating with, your animations just won't play. So this is really important. So I'm going to choose R15 since we have an R15 rig. And now we're going to open up the animation editor. So go to avatar, then go to animation editor. Now drag this into position. And now that we have the animation editor, go ahead and click on your rig. Then once you click on your rig, it's going to give you this pop-up and I'm going to create an animation called salute. Then we can start animating. So press this plus right here and I'm going to press add all body just so you can see all of the parts that we're animating with. Now, animating is pretty complicated and actually has a lot of techniques. In this tutorial, I'm not gonna show you guys actually all the techniques and stuff how to animate. There's plenty of tutorials for that, but I will show you the basics of how to get your animation scripted. So I'm gonna create a basic animation. And as I said before, it's going to be a salute. So I'm going to rotate the rig's arm. But before I rotate, make sure that you have the rotate and move increments up here checked. And if you don't, then it's just going to be rotating freely such as this where you can rotate it completely free but if you have it on rotate 15 then it's really snappy so it makes it a lot easier to rotate it So here it is, it's really basic, I'm not the best at animating, but here is how it looks, and this should work. And now that we have one single frame, that's all you need, but if you want to add keyframes and stuff like that, you can just keep animating like so. And now once you press space or press the play button, your animation will play. And you can also right click on these and you can change the easing style, the duration, and the easing direction. And there's a bunch of other stuff here. And there's even animation events, but we're not going to get into any of those in this tutorial. I might get into animation events in another tutorial though. So make sure to subscribe if I make that. Now we're going to just go back to this one. And since I want this animation to be looped so it doesn't just play for a millisecond, I'm going to press toggle looping animation right here. Then I'm going to press on these three dots, then press set animation priority. And for most animations, you want to set it to action. And then I'm going to publish it to Roblox. And then once you publish it, give it a name. Make sure to publish it under the game creator, not just any creator, make sure it's the creator of the actual game. So if this is in a group, make sure you publish the animation to the group or it will not be able to play. So then I'm going to publish it under me because it's my game press submit and then press the copy button right here to copy the id then you can also press this and open it up but just copy the id because that's all we need then i'm going to go into starter player and then starter player scripts and i'm going to create a local script and you always want to play animations on the client just because it creates less lag you can play them on the server but it's really not recommended because the server should only really handle necessities and animations are just for looks then in the local script i'm going to get the player so local player equals game.players.local player. Then I'm going to get the mouse. So local mouse equals player get mouse. Then I'm going to connect an event to whenever the mouse is clicked. And then up here, we're going to get a new animation. So local animation equals instance.new animation. And then animation.animation ID equals, and we put the ID in there, except we need to make sure that when we put the ID in, we put Roblox asset ID colon slash slash and then the ID. That way it actually lets us play the animation because you can't just put only the ID. Then we actually have to load the track. So 
local track equals nil. And then to load the track, you want to load it to the animator, which is an object in the humanoid. So what we're going to do is make a function for when the character is added. And then when the character is added, we will get the character from it by doing local character equals player dot character. Then the humanoid equals character, wait for child humanoid. And then if track, then track destroy. And we're also going to stop it before we destroy it. Then we're going to load the track through the humanoid animator. So if you look in a humanoid, as you can see, there's an animator. So what we're going to do is also get the animator by doing local animator equals humanoid over child animator. Then we can do track equals animator load animation. And then we're going to load the animation at the top up here. Then after that, that's all we need to do to load in the track. Now we're able to play and stop it. So what we'll do is if track, then if track dot is playing, then we're going to stop the track by doing this. Else we're going to play the track just like so. Then the track has not even been loaded yet because we haven't called this function. So let's go ahead and connect an event to it player.character added, connect character added. And just to make sure that it loads as soon as possible, we're going to do player uh, character added wait, then we're going to call character added. Now the reason we did player.character added wait is because we want to wait till the first character is added and then this will never happen again. And then we'll call this since the character's in and then that's when we connect the event. So that way we know that the first character loads because sometimes this event doesn't always get called at the beginning of the game. So now we should be good to start. So let's go ahead and press play. And now once we're in the game, if we click, as you can see, we are saluting, but it looks really weird and our hand is glitching out, but it does work nonetheless. But here's how you fix this weird glitch where everything's bugging out with your hand. So the thing about animations is that they only play to everything that has a keyframe. So if we go back into the animation editor, and click on this guy, you'll see that the right upper arm is the only part with a keyframe. So we have to add the other parts of the arm. So anything that we don't want to move, we'll add the right hand and the right lower arm. And now that they're all added, we can just make a keyframe for all of these two. So just pressing these three dots, add keyframe, and do that for the hand also. Then just republish to save your changes. Then once you save it, you don't need to copy the ID again because it's the exact same, unless you made a new animation. So now we can press play. Now when we click, we salute, and when we click again, we unsalute. But as you can see, it also looks really weird when it's coming down. And there's also a really easy to fix to that. So go to avatar animation editor, open the animation editor up again, click on your rig. So now what we can do is actually make an animation for when it's going up and when it's going down. So take all these keyframes by pressing the top one, then right click and then press cut. And then what we're going to do is add a keyframe right now. So where the right arm is already at. And then at six frames in, right click and press paste to paste the ones that we just cut. And now as you can see, as a transition, and make sure this one isn't looped, but it's still looking weird. So in the middle of that, just make it the opposite way. There we go, so now it's the opposite way. As you can see, it goes up the way that we want it to. Now what we can do is publish this one as this loop up. Copy that ID, and then we'll go back here and make another animation. So local animation up equals new animation animation dot animation id equals roblox asset id paste the id in and then local track up equals nil and then we want to do the exact same for the animation down so copy this by selecting all of it right click copy or press ctrl c then paste it right here and then change this one to animation down just like this and then we want to reanimate this one but instead of doing all of that all we have to do is drag the in frame since we're going down to the very beginning and the start frame to the end. So now it goes down like that. Now we can publish this one as C loop down. Copy that ID. Close out of animation editor and then paste the ID right here. And now we actually have to play the animation down and animation up and we also have to load it. So just copy this and then paste these twice. Then we'll do if track up 
then track up stop, track up destroy, and then set track up to animation up. And then if track down, then we set track down stop, and set track down to animator, load animation, animation, down. There we go, so now the tracks will load in. And then right here, if we have the track, and track is playing, then we stop it. Uh, but we want to implement our up and down animations. So before we stop it, we're actually going to stop that track, but then play track down. And then before we play the first track, we're going to play track up. And then we can do track up dot stop wait. So we wait until it stops. Now when we click, it plays the animation perfectly. It's way a lot smoother than just breaking our arm and rotating it behind our back. Now with this basic knowledge of loading tracks and playing the tracks, hopefully you guys can make your own animations. Make sure to join my Discord server if you want some help with any of your scripting needs. And also make sure to join my Roblox group. We have a bunch of new games coming out and I'd love to have you a part of our community. And as always, I'll leave this script in the description down below. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.